thought I remember before. <laughs> okay. In the late uh, 1800s, a group of ladies in Woodruff decided that they needed a book club and a magazine club. And so they started it, and they were swapping books around between each other. And after a while, they decided that they needed to make it open to the public. So a store uptown gave them a corner, and they put their magazines and their books in there, and people could take them home and read them. Well, that grew until in 1910, they built this building for, I believe, a little less than $300. Wow. And it was up right where, almost where uh, Rite Aid is now. <coughs> um, they had, I came to work here in 1968, and I was the fifth librarian they had. So you see, we'd come and we'd stay. <laughs> Anyway, I worked here for five years. This little building, when I came to work here, had an oil heater right over there. You can see where the stove pipe was. And it had shelves on both sides of that, and here, and here, and over here. And then right back here, there was what I call the dark corner. It had a shelf that came out, and it left a little place right in the bed back. The lady before me had the mysteries back there. <laughs> and right over here, they had put a, a bathroom of sorts. The wall didn't go all the way to the ceiling. It had a sink and a toilet. And there was no underpinning, no insulation. And I tell you, the windows were cold in this little building. Now, it was very pleasant in the, in the summer because you go from this door and this door, and you get a cross ventilation. It was nice. But in the wintertime, I worked from 10 to 12 and 2 to 5. And when I would come, and my husband would come up here in the morning about 6 o'clock and like the heat. If it was very, very cold, <laughs> if it was very cold, there would still be ice in the toilet when I went home. <laughs> so, but the, the library grew because of the children. I was telling Michael a while ago, the librarian before I was there was an elderly lady, and she did not like children. <laughs> so she didn't want them in there. <coughs> she said they had sticky hands in their room books. So the first month that I came to work, I invited all the first graders to come to the library. And she had checked out 101 books in March. In April, we checked out 784. <laughs> and the next month, we checked out over 1,300. Now, besides the, the, that, the children coming in, if you can imagine getting 40 children in this little tiny building, they'd sit on the floor and I'd tell them a story. When I came to work, the stove had smoked up the building, so the wild, wild, dirty wood. Uh, the ceiling was high like this, and it had three teardrop or milk glass type chandeliers in it that didn't give off a lot of light. And they had wooden, those old wooden blinds that are about an uh, inch and a half thick on the window. So I asked the mill, one of the mills, if they donate a painter. And the Western Alto donated Robin's Egg Blue Paint. <laughs> And we painted this book. <coughs> and then a JCA group bought yellow curtains, cafe curtains for the winter. Now, the one thing I could do about the floor, it had uh, linoleum on it that was so old, I'd come up in here on my day off to mop the floor, and all I did was smear the mud <laughs> <laughs> all over the floor. At least I thought it was cleaner than it had been. But uh, I enjoyed working here. People in Woodruff were really, really nice. And uh, I was excited when they built the new building, which was different from this one. This one had, was built, what, five, six years ago, I guess. But um, library services has grown, and I'm pleased with that. I, I was really happy before I left the library. I retired in 95 to, to have people come in the library. Say, Miss Page, I doubt if you remember me, but my mama used to bring me in here, and now I'm bringing my children in. So that was really nice. How did you get the books? Were they donated in the Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Spartan 
Montgomery County took the library over in 50. But before that? Before that, yes, they had a, a library association, which was just these little ladies that started it, and they would donate books or buy books for, for the library. And for a long time, even when I was, was working, they were paying all the utilities and the heating bills. Other than that, the uh, partner was buying the books. If somebody wanted a book that I didn't have, they could fill out a request. The bookmobile came down here twice a month. So when they filled out the request, the next time the bookmobile came, I would give them the request. If the book happened to be on the shelf in Spartanburg, they'd send it back the next two weeks to the bookmobile. So it took a long time to get a book. The same with the library card. If somebody came in and wanted a library card, fill out the application, I'd have to send it to Spartanburg. They'd make a card up and send it back by the bookmobile. I didn't have a card file, I didn't have a telephone. <laughs> All I had was me and a deck. <laughs> I had a lot of books. <laughs> I did have one shelf right here that sat out in the floor that you kind of had to lean to the side <laughs> to straighten the books because the shelf was lean. <laughs> Is the Timra Library on the historical registry. It is. It certainly is. No, no, no it's, it's not. not. It's not. I'm sorry. The uh, uh, oratorium over there is. Uh, I'd love to see this on the historic register. I think it should be. It's been moved and we moved it because they would have torn it down. But uh, I don't know how that goes. Well, it was moved across the street by City Hall first. And it was moved to this piece of property. The land was donated, correct? So, mm -hmm. And uh, we moved it over here so it would be next to the new library. Are y'all working on getting it on the historical registry? We're going to probably get some kind of historical designation since it's not an exact. You know, yeah. But the basic structure is the same. I mean, yeah. This floor is this wall, speed board. I mean, that's what they did in 1910. You know, I'm sure the husbands of these ladies decided they had to get out there and build this while they couldn't get a good meal. Yeah. So, <laughs> Just think about it, you know, in 1910, they, they probably didn't realize two things. Number one, that this building was going to be moved twice. Yeah. Number two, it actually be here almost 100 years later. Yeah. So it was pretty interesting. Uh, the bricks outside on the pavers, those came from one of our mills. Mills, mill. This town survived on two mills. We had the Avenue Mill and the Mills Mill, because they both closed, and like most towns, we yeah. suffered. The yeah. Avenue has been completely, almost completely tore down, and they're working on the Mills Mill now, and we got them to donate some. Brick from the Mills Mill, so that there would be a little bit of the mill still left with the. I'm Are they carrying? My family was uh, Reeves family, and that was Reeves above the mill. Yeah. And, uh, uh, it's a uh, uh, tearjerker to know that they're tearing it down. Yeah. And and Mr. Tim Robbins, you want to talk about Mr. Tim Robbins? He was at Port Lawrence in South Carolina, and I believe there are several uh, Tim Robbins libraries in the state. We joked about that walking up because they said there was one down in Somerville, I believe, and there's one in Florence. Yeah. And we said that he, he must have been spread at the Oakland Library. That, that, that explains why they're all named Tim. Now, I wish you all would come last weekend. We had a store festival, <laughs> and we would have loved for you to have come and heard all the good stories. We had, they actually did some of the events in here. Yes. We had a registration here, and I believe they one, had one story for kids in here. Yeah. I think so. We're trying to get it restored and finish it up hopefully in the next few months and, and have it have it so people can come and use it and make it a Are next year. Yeah, next year it'll be Yes, books. we will have books. Now, I've got they gave me the desk that was in here, which was just like I expect all of you the school teacher had when you were in school. And I my daughter's been using it and when I let her have it I told her the library wants it back, you'll have to give it back. So as soon as we get this done, the, the desk will come back where it wants to be.